So I was in the Discord server talking to you guys. By the way, some of the mods that we have are going back to work, so they don't really have the same kind of free time they did before. So we've got applications open for new moderators. Make sure you guys go check that out. See if you want to be a mod of the Discord server. But I, I was talking to a bunch of you guys, and a lot of you guys said I should be checking out the Joker solo series, right? You guys said it was really, 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 really good. And I know I haven't covered a lot of DC recently, largely because DC's not necessarily resonating with me, but I think maybe it was just the beginning of the stories. So it's probably worth going back and looking at the stories in terms of how they've progressed and then deciding whether or not I want to cover them anymore. But this Joker story, I'm glad you guys suggested this. This is like one of the best Joker stories that I think I've ever read, right? So here's a cool thing. A lot of this really comes out of Joker War, right? When Joker just kind of unleashed all kinds of chaos on Gotham City and all that kind of stuff. And if you guys are unfamiliar with Batman up to this point, make sure you guys check out the link down in the description. It'll take you to the Batman playlist so you can get caught up. But the whole thing about this is that we kind of pick up here with Commissioner Gordon. And one of the things that goes on is Commissioner Gordon is basically at a cop bar. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that is, and I don't know if anybody outside the States is familiar with that, but here in the States, you largely have bars that are considered cop bars in the sense that the average Joe doesn't go there, right? I mean, you could, but you're probably going to start getting funny looks when people realize that you're not a cop, right? That's one of the places where like only cops ever really go there. And a lot of them might exchange stories or kind of talk about cases they're working and different things along those lines, but just kind of a place for cops to kind of unpack and then just do their thing, right? Drink or, or whatever the case is. For Commissioner Gordon, or I guess really former Commissioner Gordon here now, he's retired. But with Gordon talking to one of the guys who used to work here, this guy's name is Danny Ryan, right? And he was a cop at one point in time and had long since retired. The way it's explained is that his dad had been one of the cops that kind of came up during the age of Al Capone, right? So like, you know, the, the St. Valentine's Day massacre and that kind of a thing. But Danny starts talking to Gordon about good and evil, right? About what it really means to actually see a criminal. And when he looks at Gordon, he sees a guy who's so young, right? And he's like, in time, you're going to start coming across guys who are pretty extreme, right? And who are pretty bad. Now, a lot of this is kind of told in hindsight. At the moment, Gordon is sort of, uh, is, is basically retired. This is somewhat early in his career. And the conversation as it goes on here is Danny basically tells him there's criminals out there, right? There's guys who rob banks and guys who kill people and things like that. Like, sure, there's criminals. Then there's evil. There's criminal. Uh, there, there, there's criminals who are just on a whole different level. Now, this is really before Commissioner Gordon has, has really ran into the Joker as we know it, right? This is still when he's kind of working his way up the ranks. And what Danny says is there was a time early on in his career when he ended up coming across or was kind of working this case where he basically saw what he considers to be the devil, right? That he had been working this case of this missing 17 year old girl and when he found her there was a guy who had quite literally or was in the process of eating her face and he offered a piece to danny ryan right and and danny just didn't quite know how to handle it, but he followed the rules of the law, right? He did what the law told him to do, which was to draw his gun and to make sure this guy gets arrested and then he goes on trial and all that kind of stuff. And he says, that's how things work in an idealistic world. In the real world, it doesn't work that way. He's like, when you come across evil, you put a bullet in its brain. Like you just do that and you don't ever look back. And while Commissioner Gordon initially dismissed that, over the course of his career, he has learned there is something in effect where there comes a point when you will encounter individuals who are just so hateful honestly evil, the best thing you possibly can do for society as a whole is to really just kill him. And in his mind, that's the Joker. And so what you do is you kind of pick up in the modern era in what's called A-Day. And A-Day was basically this giant attack on Arkham Asylum. And it wasn't necessarily one of these things where like the Joker did some stuff and got away because the Joker's not locked up in Arkham. Instead, what had happened is 500 people had been killed in Arkham. And the reason why is there's a couple things happening. The first is a guy by the name of Mayor Nakano, who is really kind of given to us as largely an inept person, right? Doesn't quite really know what he's doing. Doesn't really understand what it means to be a mayor in the city of Gotham. He's really causing more problems than he's actually solving. But the other part of this is that it all looks like it was done by the Joker, that it was some kind of modified version of the Joker toxin that basically spread its way throughout the prison and then killed a whole bunch of different people. But while Commissioner Gordon's working this case and even presenting the evidence to Batman, albeit with Batman's now limited resources, one of the things that he kind of hits on here is things don't make sense, right? Something's not right. The Joker usually always leaves a calling card or something along those lines. The fact that this isn't there seems kind of strange, but at the same time, it really is just kind of the Joker's MO, right? To kill like 500 people and just sort of call it a day. And so what you end up getting here is this moment where James Gordon is just kind of leaving and then, you know, sort of uh, going back and doing his thing and is suddenly met by a woman by the name of Cressida, right? Now she meets him in a limousine. There's this great big, huge imposing figure behind him, right? Kind of scary. And she's like, we need to have a conversation about the Joker, right? Now, as soon as they end up getting into the house that she's in, 
it's like this totally different situation than what he was expecting, right? What ends up happening is we find out that the Joker is actually in Belize. And that's one of the funny things about his character. The Joker, whenever you usually see him in Batman comics, it's, you know, the Joker's assault on Gotham. You don't really see the Joker in foreign countries, but he is here, right? He's literally in Belize just kind of hiding out. There's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But the proposal that's put forward by Cressida here is because of Jim Gordon's experience in, in hunting the Joker and dealing with the Joker, the kind of things the Joker's done to him, right? So like injuring Barbara Gordon, turning his son James against him, or really kind of bringing his son James down to the Joker's level, taking what chance he had to regain his sanity and kind of wiping it away. She basically says, we have an idea, right? You have more experience with him than anybody else. We want you to hunt the Joker. Like we want you to find the Joker for us. In return, we will give you a bank card with unlimited funds. There is no limit. And then when you're done and you're back, we'll give you $25 million in your personal account. And then when he's kind of like, okay, I mean, you just want, you want me to, you want me to grab the Joker and bring him in for 25 million bucks. That sounds like a bounty. And the, the answer she gives is no, I mean, that's not really what we were shooting for. I mean, I guess it kind of is a bounty to a degree, but if all we wanted was for the Joker to be handed over to the authorities, we would hire the authorities to do it. We want you to kill the Joker. The authorities are not going to do that. We can't hire cops to kill a Joker, at least not publicly anyway. And we certainly can't do it with the government, right? I mean, maybe they could, maybe they can't, but whatever the case is, this has to be done discreetly, right? It has to be done quietly. And so it's one of these things where he's a little on the fence about it. And then suddenly the conversation that he had with Danny Ryan at the beginning of the story kind of comes back again. When she asked the question, do you believe in evil? And when the answer is yes, yes, I do. Then in turn, it's the Joker's evil. We need you to take care of him. And so what you end up doing is switching back over to Belize, Joker reading the newspaper, and then coming to this realization that everything that's going on in Arkham is being made to look like he's the one that did it, right? So seemingly the Joker doesn't really have a hand in any of this. And so following that, you get a few different things going on, right? First, you end up transitioning to this kind of woman who's in this great big, huge incubation tank in Santa Prisca. Not a whole lot going on there, at least as far as the revelation goes. But then there's also other things, like a brother and a sister who basically get a kind of text message, right? Like another guy who gets a text message. All these people are being contacted. And so ultimately, Jim Gordon meets up with Batman and then spills the beans. Now, again, one of the things to remember about Batman here is Batman doesn't have the same kind of resources that he did. Because of the Joker War, it basically came to public light that Batman had been had been sending money to like offshore accounts. He had, in effect, been violating like tax laws. And so in order to ensure those waters can be navigated and Bruce Wayne can maintain his role as Batman, Lucius Fox effectively took over control of, of Wayne Industries. And so Bruce Wayne doesn't have control of his own company. At the same time, they have to distance themselves from him in order to clear up all the red tape. That was basically DC kind of coming back and saying, okay, so like we're going to separate Batman from like the whole wealth and all that kind of stuff and take him back to his roots of just being a pretty basic detective with some incredible skills, a really, really good knowledge of like how to fight various villains. And like, that's going to be it, right? We're going old school is essentially what they were doing, which is great, right? It's a really, really cool thing. And so when, when Gordon meets with Bruce, he kind of tells him everything that's going on, right? The fact that he met with Cressida, the fact that he was given or at least promised $25 million for killing the Joker and bringing him in. And it's kind of a funny thing because where Bruce kind of looks at this and says like, you really want to do this, don't you? The response of Gordon is, I do. But there's almost this kind of inner monologue that he has where he's like, I don't really want to admit that out loud, right? Like, I don't want to say, yes, I want to kill the Joker because if he admits it, it means it's, it's something that he publicly and, and really just fully desires. So long as he doesn't publicly say it, then at least there's some part of him that can believe that he doesn't want to actually do it. But the reality is this is personal for Gordon, right? Like it's a very, very personal thing. And so he basically tells Batman, here's what I need from you, right? I need every single thing that you have on the Joker. Everything, everything, everything. I don't want any of that stuff left out. I want you to have your people research this girl and tell me what it is that you guys know about her. Beyond that, I want access to your Bat computer. I want to know every single file, right? Everything that's ever happened. I want I want to use your database to fill in the blanks of what I have with the Joker. Because at the end of the day, Commissioner Gordon's knowledge about the Joker is nowhere near as extensive as Batman. Gordon needs that to actually do his investigation and to get all that stuff figured out. The other thing about this is Oracle is listening, right? Barbara Gordon is listening. And one of the things to remember is Commissioner Gordon doesn't actually know that Barbara Gordon is Oracle or even Batgirl. And so you kind of have this bit of a, of a thing where, where, you know, Batman's like, Oracle, are you listening? She's like, yes. And I just want to go on record. This is a terrible decision. <laughs> Gordon's going to get himself killed. But there's also a big difference between what he's saying, right? He didn't promise you that he would bring the Joker in. He just said it would make sense to do it. And that seems to be a bit of a detail that Batman actually missed because it kind of catches him off guard for a moment. And then he kind of looks at Gordon like, are you really going to kill the Joker? And that's when Gordon pulls a distraction by essentially pulling this ace out of the 
the hole and just asking the question, are you sure you're just not worried about your old man, Barbara Gordon? And that's when the revelation comes out. Jim Gordon knows who knows that his daughter is Batgirl and he knows that she's Oracle. He was never supposed to know that. He's actually known for a long time. Batman's lips are pursed, right? He's like, uh, and then like Oracle's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows how to react to this, right? And so at the end of the day, like they end up kind of having this, this sort of meeting with each other, at least Jim Gordon and Barbara do. And then ultimately you end up just having Jim Gordon and, and really Barbara giving him information saying, obviously there's no way to talk you out of this, right? There's no way to convince you to not do this. Given the history between yourself and the Joker, this is very much a personal thing. So she gives him a phone and says, this will get you files to the, to the, the back computer, but know that some of those files are locked. And so if you need access to those, you're going to need a really, really good reason. I'm going to call you once a day. If you don't answer during that day, I'm going to have the phone self-destruct, right? He's on a very, very tight leash here, which is not designed to curtail his investigation to make sure he doesn't find anything incriminating on Batman when he's searching the computers. It's because it's her dad and she's scared that her dad's going to die. <laughs> That's really what's kind of going on there. Now, as far as the Joker himself, in terms of his location in Belize, this is kind of a cool thing here. And the reason for that is because this is kind of a, a safe haven of sorts, right? Now, why it's a bit of a safe haven, again, we'll talk about here in a minute because it's a really cool concept that DC's never really explored before, but you end up having this guy Desmond who kind of shows up here and basically says, look, like the people you've killed in this building, you were not supposed to kill, right? There's guys you can hit and then there's guys you can't hit. And these are one of those guys that you can't hit. And ultimately the Joker's like, don't really care, man. It's kind of my thing, right? To kill people. It's just sort of what I do. And because of the fact that this is not a mess that's easily cleaned up and because the powers that be are in this position where it's the Joker can't be doing stuff like this, ultimately they ask him to leave. In response, he's like, but here's the kicker though. There's gonna be tons of people who are gonna come looking for me here. And this is a perfect spot, right? This is an actual perfect spot to be. I can see everybody coming from a mile away. So I'll leave, I'll get on a plane and I'll take off, get out of your hair, no muss, no fuss. You can say you got everything resolved, the powers that be will just kind of leave you alone and everything will be copacetic. But in the meantime, before I do, what I need is about 30 of your men to basically help me ward off everybody who's gonna come here looking for me. Now. That's kind of the big question is, why are all these different people looking for Joker and who are the powers that be? So we end up having Crusader who basically goes back directly to, you know, the people who essentially employed her only to find out that she's essentially working for the Court of Owls and the Court of Owls are hunting the Joker. The girl who was in the great big huge tank in Santa Prisca, she puts the mask on. She's been exposed to Venom. She's the new Bane. Essentially, she's the daughter of Bane, which is kind of a crazy thing. And so ultimately you have Jim Gordon who gets on the plane and basically heads out directly to, uh, to Belize. And this is when you get this really cool kind of explanation that goes on here. Now, Barbara Gordon and like, and you know, Cassandra Kane and like Stephanie Brown and them, they're all looking into like Cressida trying to figure out what's going on. It's not a significant plot point at this point in the story. It's just kind of a little background investigation that's happening. But one of the things that Gordon talks about here is a lot of the stuff that he kind of picked up over the course of his time as a cop, but a lot of things that he also didn't know. And one of the things that he talks about here is that in the criminal underworld, there aren't necessarily rules, but there are norms right? There are things that you just don't do, right? Like when you're a criminal, you don't take out other criminals unless they've done something to screw you over. And there's kind of this unwritten rule that's existed in comic books for years and years and years and years and years, right? It was, it's always been that way, but this is one of those very rare instances. If there's ever really been an instance at all, where like a comic book publisher comes out and says, here's the reason why, right? Here's some in comic book logic for why that happens. But you look at things where like the Joker teams up with Two-Face, right? Or like the Green Goblin will team up with like Loki or something along those lines in Marvel Comics, and you'll have instances where like villains will screw over other villains. And the question you always find yourself asking is, why don't those villains kill the villains that screwed them over? And we largely attributed that to the fact that it's just, well, I mean, the villains gotta stay so you can tell comic book stories. Instead, the way this works is you don't hit other villains unless they've intentionally screwed you over. If you do, then whoever those friends and family of the villain that you killed are, have every recourse to take you out and nobody's gonna offer you any safe haven. More so than that, the other part of the way this works is that there are these kind of networks, right? These safe havens. The back during World War II, you had these places that were for essentially German war criminals, but over the years they've been repurposed. And so the way this works is that if you're a criminal and you're looking to lie low, you can actually go to these places and you can kind of just stay there for a period of time. It's going to cost you a lot of money, but you can stay there. And that it's almost kind of for criminals and ran by criminals, but there are rules there, much like where you can't hit other guys. You can't hit, take out other criminals. You can't just start tearing the place up, right? It's kind of a, a, a huge sign of disrespect 
respect and ultimately you'll be ousted from those places more so than that the reason why the joker is being allowed to stay at that that base in belize is kind of bragging rights if they let the joker stay there and the joker follows the rules like he's supposed to which you know, we know the joker is not going to do that and the joker eventually goes back to gotham then those organizations or criminals or people who were in this particular instance desmond the guy who runs it can basically kind of advertise hey we kept the joker saved from batman imagine what we can do for you right that's that's the kind of marketing they can put out there and so you have commissioner gordon who lands in belize with some terrible spanish which is probably still better than mine and starts talking to all these different people who are here and he kind of gets his nose to the ground he does a little bit of investigation and the very least that he can get is that there is this place out there in the in the countryside where like criminals go whenever they're looking to lie low but they don't say the name of it right just for fear of the fact that there's eyes and ears everywhere and if they start talking about this place there's a good chance that they'll end up being killed because no one's supposed to know that it's there but ultimately jim gordon figures out where the location is now not knowing the joker's here <laughs> <laughs> Jim Gordon goes knocking on the door saying, Hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for somebody, right? He kind of hears this, 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 this answer, like, uh, who is it? And he's like, I'm, I'm looking for someone. Like I'm, I'm looking for an old friend. The door opens and there's the Joker and Joker's like, Jimbo, is that really you? <laughs> <laughs> Gordon immediately pulls the gun. It's the last person he was expecting here. The problem is he's surrounded by like 30 guys, right? So guns get dropped. Joker and Commissioner Gordon kind of start talking. While that's going on, you got a brother and sister murdering team that shows up here. Now, these two actually hail from a family in Texas. And that's why like literally the daughter of Bane is hunting for the Joker. It's why these, these, this brother and sister are hunting for the Joker because Bane was killed in the assault on Arkham Asylum. Scarecrow was killed in the assault on Arkham Asylum. The members of the family of the the brother and sister were killed in the assault on arkham asylum specifically one of their members of the family had actually taken the rap for the rest of the family and then in turn was just serving life there they kind of funneled money into arkham to make sure they could serve the most comfortable life sentence possible but it's basically just revenge everybody thinks the joker did this so everybody's coming for the joker and that's kind of the funny thing because like literally joker's like hey man you got here just in time because everybody's coming here to kill me so draw your guns chap it's gonna be a long night <laughs> <laughs> and so what you end up getting here is this really really cool moment where you have like the daughter of bane who's one of the first ones to come running up on the joker and try to assault him now the joker kind of dodges out of the way but she may she she gets through his guys so fast and then ultimately gets her hands on him with the intention of just like killing him the problem with this is that as soon as she has her hands on the joker the twins arrive in a bus they hijack and killed everybody on board right just cut all their throats so now they're like we're gonna take out the joker too and then a little bit of beef kind of happens between them and and the daughter of bane which is just sort of like okay so like who are we gonna kill like like who's who's gonna kill the joker <laughs> because the daughter of bane is like no he's coming back to santa prisca so we can deal with him we can execute him there for what he did to to bane and then in turn the twins are like nope he's coming back to texas so we can kill him right joker stops everything and says hey guys so let me know if you've heard this right what's white and black and red all over he's like it's the nerve gas canisters that i spent the last few days planting around the grounds i painted them that way you know for the joke beep boom like the whole place explodes right like nerve gas canisters every just go off everywhere right everybody's dumped with enough nerve gas to knock them out cold it's the most joker thing ever right it makes perfect sense why not set this place up so that you can kind of have your own your own sort of backup plan right just rig the whole place to detonate and the reality of this and that's what's so funny about this the reality of this is he's violating the the criminal norms all over the place right you would never do this in one of these facilities but let's be honest with ourselves what are they going to do the Joker is quite possibly the most dangerous criminal in the world, depending on who you're talking to. Some people might say Deathstroke, but what separates people like Deathstroke and the Joker is the Joker is the most extreme sociopath, right? He's not a psychopath. He takes satisfaction in killing others. So he's an extreme sociopath, right? Like that's his whole MO. And because of that, there's no real moral compass there outside of whatever it is he wants to do in order to achieve his own selfish goals. In most of those instances, it's getting Batman to come after him but because of that the joker will kill whoever he can whenever he can if it means it's going to draw batman out everybody in the world every single person who lives in the world as far as the joker is concerned with the exception of batman is just cannon fodder toys to be used in the game that he plays and that's what i think makes him the most dangerous criminal in the whole world but ultimately commissioner gordon wakes up and when he does of course you end up seeing the joker basically sewing the mouth shut of one of the guys and he's kind of talking about how like this guy and his sister think they're super dangerous they're not right he's like you know they're they're young 
young kids. They don't understand what it's like, Gordon. They don't know what it's like for us old crowds. See, we're old school. We know how to do things the right way. And that's one of the kind of, one of the funny things here is because there's almost a kind of connection between these two, right? Because the Joker and Jim Gordon really are kind of old school, right? Like we know how to get work done, right? These young kids, they don't, they, they're, they're, they're all pomp and circumstance, right? They're, they're putting on a show, but when it all comes down to it, their guts are made of, of, of liquid, just like everybody else, right? Like they're just, they're weak. They're half measures. And that's kind of the funny thing because he's like, let's sit down and have a talk, Gordon, right? Old school man to old school man. The guys who knew how to do things right. He's like, I understand that you hate me, Gordon. I totally get it. I totally, I totally get you hate me. I've done terrible things to you, right? I destroyed any chance your son had of, ha of, of sanity. I shot your daughter through the spine. She's going to be paralyzed and for the rest of her life and has to have an implant that allows her to walk around and her days are numbered, right? Like I have turned your life upside down. And he says, you know, in looking at you, you're so intriguing because let's look at Batman, right? Batman's crazy. Batman's a lost ball in high weeds. The logic this man follows is I'm going to dress as a bat and beat up criminals in the middle of the night. No sane human being would come to that logical conclusion. He's crazy. He's as crazy as I am. And if it wasn't for you grounding him, he would have lost his mind a long time ago. He'd be serving a life sentence in Arkham Asylum. Basically just the kid who lost his family and then went nuts. And that would be the story of him. And he says, but you, Gordon, you're a hypocrite, right? Like you are a person who believes that fighting evil makes you good. Maybe good and evil do exist, but just because you're fighting evil does not mean that you're a good person. Evil fighting evil. So at the end of the day, tell me why you do this, right? Like, why don't you let Batman just kill everybody? Why don't you just take the reins off of him and just say, you know what, Bruce, do your thing. Why don't you just cut him off, right? And just let Batman go off the deep end so this quote unquote war could be won. And the response of Gordon is because this is a war that cannot be won. It's the inner thoughts of Commissioner Gordon, right? Like this whole conversation is basically Gordon publicly admitting to the Joker that at the end of the day, Batman's actions really are not getting anything done. And that's what the Joker says, right? He's like, the whole purpose of Batman is he busts some criminals, he hands them over to the Joker justice system, the justice system puts them on trial, they go to Arkham Asylum, and they escape. That's how the system works, and it's working as intended. The system was not designed to eliminate criminals. The system was designed to enable criminals. Why? Because if the blue-collar criminals, the guys who rob banks and things like that, if they're doing making all this noise over here, then that's what the prosecutors focus on, because that's what people worry about. People don't worry about the guy who's committing fraud out there in the ether somewhere with a white-collar job. They worry about the person who's going to break into their home. It's a great distraction, right? Keep the people looking over there and you do your thing over here. The system works exactly as intended. So why do you play this game? Why do you do this, right? Like, why do you fight evil and believe you're the good guy in the first place, knowing that just because you fight evil does not automatically mean that you're good. And the response of Gordon is interesting here, right? He says, I don't know that I know how to be good, but I do know that I know how to fight evil and that's good enough for me. And so that's kind of the funny thing because he says, okay, here's what I want from you, right? Here's what I want from you, Gordon. I want you to figure out who's the person behind this because I want you, I want you to tell me, I want you to run this investigation. I know that you've been sent here to kill me and you're going to go back to Gotham City and you're going to get 25 million smackaroos and that's nice, but I want to know who it was that killed all those people in Arkham Asylum and then made it look like me. And the response of Gordon is, it was you. And that's when the Joker freaks. One of the important things to understand about the Joker, it's a matter of pride, right? Like the Joker's one of these guys where he's like, yeah, man, I kill people all the time, but I want people to know it was me who did it. It's not as though I'm an assassin. I'm not somebody who sneaks in your house in the middle of the night, kills you, and then leaves. He's like, is there anything about me that would lead you to believe if I was going to unleash a Joker toxin in the entirety of Arkham that it would kill people in their sleep? Is that really what you think I would do? No, I would unleash the Joker toxin in the in the in Arkham Asylum, and yes, it would kill everybody there. But I would love to know the satisfaction that the person at the other end of the hall was just laying there in terror as they heard each person in the cell next to them succumb to their laughter and then ultimately die knowing that creeping fog of terror is making their way towards them. I find satisfaction in that, Gordon. I love that, Gordon. What in the world would make you think that I wouldn't do that? And that line of logic right there is absolutely sound because while the Joker is crazy as hell, right? As while he's he's absolutely nuts, that's exactly what he would do, right? The Joker leaves calling cards. The Joker wants people to know the things that he does. He's an extreme 
extreme narcissist and sociopath. That's his whole MO. And so it's like, I want you to figure out what's going on because there's something much bigger afoot going on here. Something much, much bigger that's taking place here. And he's like, I want you to see something, Gordon. You have this faith in a, in a, in a system, right? You have this belief, this little tiny spark in you that believes this, this judicial system, this criminal justice system that you work for is actually capable of doing the right thing. I want to remove that. I'm going to snap that out of you. And I want you to understand, Gordon, I'm going to break you in a way that stripping you down naked and showing pictures of what I did to your daughter will, will simply not do, right? I did that to you in an amusement park, right? I had you go through this roller coaster ride of hell where I showed you pictures of what I did to your daughter, of what my guys did to your daughter. I'm going to do far worse than that. Of course, that being a reference to the killing joke, but it's one of these things where he's like, in the meantime, go find out what's going on, right? Like find out what's happening here. And so ultimately he just kind of leaves, uh, leaves Commissioner Gordon on his own. He heads to what's basically Europe. And then Commissioner Gordon is saved by the daughter of Bane. And, and, and as they have this not really a lengthy conversation here, she recognizes him, of course, and says like, you're Bane from Gotham City, right? And he's like, yes. And she's like, go home, Gordon, right? You're, you're already drowning in the darkness. Head back to the light while you still can, Gordon. This is, this is a land of wolves and you were not meant for this world, right? You were not meant for this kind of an environment. I understand that you have the desire to be, I understand that you want to do the right thing, but no, there's a big difference between people like you who do what they can and people like me who do what they have to. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all later. Peace.